to Tales of the Flipside to our Pro Spec 10 list. Let's go ahead and get this party started. Our number 10 book for this week is Amazing Spider-Man 361 Second Print. Half Price Crook, what's going on with this book? With a recent spiking of 361 first print, you know, the old adage, you're going to get priced out of that, maybe move on to, uh, instead of buying like a 7.0 of the first print, maybe getting a higher grade of the second print. These can still be gobbled up for somewhere around 75 to to $100 raw. Um, nine eights will cost you around 300 right now. I picked one up for $25 at a, a local shop a couple weeks back in, in, in near, mutt, near mint condition. It's it, it can still be found out there. The print run uh, is somewhere I believe to be around 100,000 for the second print, but uh, almost close to a half a million on the first print. The uh, CGC census reflects that as well. There's almost 20,000 total CGC uh, submissions for uh, the first print, and on the second print, it's closer to a thousand, around eleven hundred, some change. In, in the modern age, right, we've adopted and we've gravitated towards late printings, given their relative scarcity. And frankly, this book is no different than what we've seen in the current market. Now, granted, in, in, in this point in the '90s, print runs were enormous, right? But as a percentage of of that print run of those print runs, this is no different than what we're seeing now. So. I, I think these books will be sought after. Um, and there are several Marvel late printings, whether they have the silver or the gold cover, um, that I think people will be chasing uh, in the not too distant future. Uh, so a really nice pick. Our number nine book for this week is Marvel Presents Bloodstone number one. Steve, I believe you have all the information on this one. This is the uh, first appearance and partial origin of Ulysses Bloodstone, who's the father of Elsa. I think monsters are going to be in the MCU future at some point. And when you have monsters, you need monster fighters. So <laughs> it's it's probably, and, and Kevin Feige says, you know, everyone's going to appear eventually anyway. And I, you know, let I think we all trust that guy, right? Um, so, um, so whether we, we see his daughter or we see him is um, kind of moot because there is a tendency whether from what we've seen in the MCU is whether you're introducing the first, well, if you're introducing, introducing a second generation character, you, you, you at least get a glimpse of the first, whether it's Isaiah Bradley or uh, Bill Foster right now, this is, an easy under fifty dollar, you know, high grade raw. One thing you can tell that people aren't paying attention to this book is there's only two hundred fifty four in the census. Um, now, if you look at other books that were released in October, nineteen seventy five, um, there's Champions number one, not not the one that made the top ten list about a month ago, <laughs> but the, the other one. Uh, there's about over a thousand graded. And if you look at X-Men 95, which was released the same month, right. there's nearly 2,500 graded. So that tells you people are kind of overlooking this book. Um, so that, that's why, I, and I kind of like the books that people really aren't looking at. And um, the time horizon may be longer than, than some of the other uh, spec books out there, but um, you know, it, it's worth a cheap pickup. For our next book, we have Daredevil 111, Volume 2, series from 1998, published in 2008. Welcome back, Richie. What do you got on this? Hey, thanks, Aaron. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, you're right. Daredevil 111 from Volume 2, like you were just saying. This book, In the Guts and on the cover, is the first appearance and origin of uh, Lady Bullseye, also known as uh, uh, Maki uh, uh, Matsumoto. Now, before I get into like the information on this book, the reason why I like this book so much is, well, first of all, this is this is no like you know uh, new spec that I discovered. I mean, everybody knows this was a pretty solid modern book for many years. So, I mean, it's nothing new here. But this book is in a major law. I mean, cover A and the Dodson variants um, near mint rolls are selling for twenty to thirty bucks. At one time, that book was like. 70 to 80 dollars minimum you know there's also the one in 25 aha negative space variant that's the one i would really look look out for and there's also a really nice second print 
But um, the reason why I like this book so much is um, the recent information with Echo and how she could uh, basically connect the Netflix characters, Daredevil per se, to the MCU. I think that a lot of people automatically went and ran for Daredevil 131, which was the first first appearance and origin of the original Bullseye. Well, in the world we're in right now in 2021 and how how women as a whole just step forward and how powerful they are, why couldn't it be Lady Bullseye? I mean, so, you know, it's a dirt cheap spec. I think this has legs for days, long term. And even if it doesn't happen on the screen, but we keep it comics, I totally see this character coming back. I mean, you know, the current uh, Chip Zdarsky run, Electra is currently uh, taking the Daredevil moniker for now, but I mean, will it last? Probably not. But if it does, I mean, that makes this a better play, so to speak, more enticing play long term. Because, hey, look at it this way. Now she has an adversary if they bring her into the into that Zdarsky run. For our number seven book, we have Canto 2, Hollow Man, number one, cover A. Hi, I'm Comic Book Journey. Um, yeah, so uh, this is my pick. So um, pretty much Canto, you know, with the whole buzz going on, everybody's talking about Will Smith, uh, Jada Pickett, you know, they own the property. Um, this book has three new characters, uh, Falcor, Richta, and Verata. And these are two side notes that you guys want to think about. Um, Fal and Falco, he actually makes a little cameo appearance in um, Clockwork Fairies, the one shot. You guys can debate on that on your own. You know, the whole community can debate whether it's a first appearance or a cameo. Keep in mind that Verata, she died, actually dies in issue three, but I'm still not sold on that. A lot of people are chasing after Canto issue one. You know, they're diving into the 1K mark now. Instead of chasing after Canto one, I think a lot of people are sleeping on Canto two. I think this really has a really good ROI because the book is only cover price. <laughs> you know, I, I've absolutely seen this, I've seen this on the shelf for like three months, just sitting there. A nine eight sold for thirty one dollars, on and there's only eleven on the census. So to me, I think this is actually a really no brainer. Oh yeah, shout out yep. to um, to Jack and Brian. Uh, for mentioning this back in the day, and I don't think anybody really pay, paid attention to it. And Hyper, and Newbie, and um, Hoodrat. Um, I think they mentioned it uh, recently, too. So, shout out to them. All right, for our halfway point at number six, we have Marvel Spotlight on Star Wars Saga Begins. Ultra, I know you're a huge Star Wars fan. What's up with this? Okay, so the, this is a Star Lord story basically told from the Master of the Sun perspective. And this is also the first comic book sized appearance of Star Lord. There's there's all sorts of just good nostalgia about this. It came out May 1980, so mm -hmm. it's an older book. Forty cent cover price is what you're looking for. I love this book for so many reasons, but not only that, I love it because it's now making even more sense as they rewrite the Star Lord origin in this latest run of Guardians of the Galaxy, and now they're off into a new arc. Uh, so. This is always a book worth picking up. If you see it in high grade, uh, you know, it's definitely one that should be put into your collection if it's listed at an affordable price. All right. For our number five book, we have SpongeBob Comics number one. Half Price Crook, what's going on? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm, I was actually surprised <laughs> that uh, this, this got voted as high as it got. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but I, I've got a lot of faith in this book. I, I've been buying this book up a lot. I'm not selling it. I'm going to sit on it for it. This is my long-term spec uh, of the decade, like um, for multiple reasons. It, it has a low pop count in the CGC census. It has a extremely low print run, like you're around, around 11,000 um, for a book that came out. And I think it was like 2015. So to put it in perspective, it, it's right there with like the – the, like the final issues of Akira, um, which we all know are really hard to find. Um, also, SpongeBob's iconic. I, I watch it with, I've got a lot of kids. I have five kids. I've watched SpongeBob with my oldest, who's 24 and just got married. I watch it with my six-year-old, uh, who is my youngest now. 
I still giggle. I love SpongeBob. Uh, it's iconic. Uh, adults love SpongeBob. My my girlfriend loves SpongeBob. Uh, that doesn't mean that she's gonna necessarily rush out and buy the comic, but just just to talk about like a kids comic that will span generations and has two movies out. Um, and this is I thought was the funniest part of it. Like there's a few that are signed by Tom Kenny who voiced SpongeBob. Um, if you don't know who he is, uh, he also does the voice of Squanchy and Rick and Morty. Uh, he's uh, kind of twisted and demented, and I love him. There's only 89 nine eights. Um, wow. So, wow. Yeah. Uh, there's also a newsstand, if you're nasty. At number four, we have War of Realms, New Agents of Atlas. Welcome back, Andy. Long time to see, man. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, glad to be back. And, uh, I love this book. Um, this book has seen some steady gains over the last couple months, and it's it's well deserved, in my opinion. Um, the CGC nine eights are selling for around two hundred bucks. Raws around twenty five to thirty, which is still not bad, um, considering I, I think there's a ton of upside in this book. Uh, with all the first appearances, you have Luna Snow, Wave Crescent. L-O-I-O, however you want to say the big magical blue bear's name, um, whatever it is, I'm not sure. Uh, also, Arrow in this, debatable first appearance, but she's in here. Um, and Jimmy Woo is paving the way, um, already on screen. So, I don't know. It's just an all-around good book. I love it, and I think there's plenty of upside on it, for sure. So many first appearances to absolutely support that and i absolutely pick this book up anytime i see it and I'm, every time i see it i'm like i can't believe somebody left this behind yep absolutely i i, I agree i agree as well I, absolutely this is arrow's uh uh first appearance um and then don't uh you guys probably remember uh look on the cover Swordmaster first cover appearance but his first appearance is in issue number two but this is a great pick um maybe steve or ultra can help me with this but i believe retailers got one in one yes. open uh one in one on these books so yes. the retailer they orders got, of on this book are you know yeah double. some people will say like close to ultra uh ultimate fa fallout four numbers a little bit less but hey i think uh like young avengers one and and books like that with so many first appearances the demand is going to outweigh the availability pick these up now great job at number three, we have Deadpool number one from 1997. This is his first ongoing solo series. There were two miniseries prior to this. This is really where we begin to see Deadpool the way that we know him today. Came out in the late 90s. I think it's something collectors are really going to gravitate towards, you know, given that uh, New Mutants 98 has gotten out of reach for a lot of collectors. I expect this book to be the one that, that, that people really latch on to. There's a newsstand version of this that goes overlooked most of the time because this is a uh, a gatefold double double cover. Uh, that barcode is on the back. You know, newsstands in the late 90s at this point were, were far more rare than they were in the mid-90s. For our number two book, we have Tomb of Dracula, number 58. Dollar dollar bin, y'all. What's up? Dollar dollar man, y'all. Okay, thank you, Aaron. Uh, <laughs> Tuma Dracula 58. Um, so, yeah, this was my pick. I've been going after um, Blade Spec. I couldn't believe I was seeing this book in high grade selling on the secondary market for 6 to $36. Now, this Tuma Dracula issue is the first solo story or uh, so to speak, or uh, solo Blade issue in comics. It Basically reminds me of um, like from Moon Knight, Marvel Spotlight 28. That was a, a lower price book. Then all of a sudden, you know, it's now getting up there. This right here is right is basically a back issue dollar bin book. And you know, once Blade gets closer, I see this being a complete banger. I mean, I think these should be scooped up fast. Uh, I think there was what 24, 25, nine eights, and 86 total nine two or better on the census. All right, and for our number one pick of this week, we have Incredible Hulk, number 228. Ultra, fill us in on this. 
Well, I wish I could give credit to whoever's pick this was, but uh, that wasn't left in the notes. But whoever you are, uh, I, I, it was voted number one for a few reasons because we have a situation where it's a sleeper appearance because the appearance, first appearance of somebody else taking over the name Moonstone. So Carla Soffin, uh, she first appears in Captain America, Volume 1, number 192. But she appears here in Incredible Hulk number 228 as the the new Moonstone. And this is definitely, I think she's one of the oldest members of the potential Thunderbolts team or right. even a villain in Dark Avengers that uh, can be specced on. So this is where we're going to we're gonna make them, the, all the fans who are watching this show, first off and foremost, I want to thank you guys for tuning into the Spec 10. Uh, but this one is going to make you work. And I know Richie's got some follow-up on this, but I, I want to point out there is a Marvel value stamp you're going to be hunting for when looking for this book. So I wish you luck. And you, you said you had something to add uh, for this one, Richie? Yeah. You know, this book has battled Captain America 192 for the last couple years or so as the market's choice for uh, Carlos Soffin uh, Moonstone. But uh, just, there's two Moonstones. So you have Captain America 169, which is your first cameo appearance or first appearance in cameo of the Moonstone or Moonstone number one. You have Captain America 170, and that is the first full appearance of Moonstone number one and or the first Moonstone. And then... Um, Captain America 192, which is the first appearance of Carla Soffin, who later becomes a, the second Moonstone in this great pick, Incredible Hulk 228.